Hello and welcome to another edition of the Dinosaur News Center. We bring you the latest in research, discoveries, and other news relating to the world of dinosaurs. I'm your host, the Illiterate Scholar. In this edition of the Dinosaur News Center, we'll be looking at a very heartless discovery. A teeny tiny dinosaur, well maybe not that small, and thunder thighs. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started then. More often than not, paleontology consists of theories and guesses. You find a bunch of bones and you try to make the best guess. Sometimes you get lucky and you find out that your theories were completely spot on. That was the case with the foot of the dromaeosaurs. We know this group of dinosaurs had a sickle claw on their toes. The theory is that the sickle claw was held up to keep it from dragging on the floor, preventing it from getting dull. A couple of years ago, a set of tracks were found in China belonging to one of these animals. How do we know the footprints belong to that of a dromaeosaur? The third toe print on this set of tracks was just a little stub. This tells us that the sickle claw was held up from the ground just like we thought. Now, new dromaeosaur tracks have been found in Niger. And just like the discovery in China, only the tracks have been found. This new raptor's toe print was not as prominent as the Chinese discovery. Which suggests that this new raptor lacked the robust padding on its feet compared to the other one. And get this, just like the Chinese discovery, there were multiple set of tracks suggesting that more than one raptor was traveling together. This gives more evidence that raptors lived in packs. This dinosaur does have a name, but I don't know how official it is, so I'm going to leave it out for now. Anyone ever heard of Willow the Thesslosaurus? It's a dinosaur discovered with a fossilized heart. The x-ray scan shows that the heart had four chambers similar to that of a bird. Ah, <sighs> but it turns out it was too good to be true. The latest CT scans and x-rays reveals that the so-called heart was nothing more than a concentration of sand washed into its body. The concentration of sand ended up where the heart is supposed to be, and I guess it tricked the paleontologists into thinking it was a heart. It's one of those unfortunate coincidences. Imagine yourself as a little dinosaur, just sitting there, minding your own business, when all of a sudden, BAM! A sand dune collapses onto you, and you're dead. And for whatever reason, the rest of your body is missing and only your legs have been found. This is exactly what happened to a new Alverisosaur discovered in the Gobi Desert. All we have are its legs and still in the sitting position. The new dinosaur is named Albinicus Batar and it weighs in at about 1.5 to 2 pounds, making it one of the smallest dinosaurs ever found. Oh, and the cause of death, I kinda made that up. But hey, it's a likely scenario. A new sauropod has just been unearthed in Brazil. Its name is Tapurisaurus Macedo, a titanosaur from early Cretaceous. The fossil contains a few bits and pieces, but the biggest prize is a complete skull. As I said before, a sauropod skull is very rare. Having the skull intact really gives us an idea of what the animal looks like. As far as dinosaur body shape is concerned, a sauropod is pretty generic, so we really can't screw it up that badly. This just in, a Deinonychus was seen flying through the air 110 million years ago. Is it more evidence that dinosaurs and birds are related? Raptors learning how to fly? No, no. It was just kicked upside the ass. The culprit responsible for this heinous act is Brontomerus Macintosh of early Cretaceous Utah. The name Brontomerus means thunder thighs, because it had very big thighs. Its massive hip bone also allows some very robust muscle attachments to its legs. Its body size is estimated to be around 3 fourths the size of Giraffe Titan, but its hip bone was slightly larger than that of Giraffe Titan. As for why this animal had such large hips, there are currently three different theories. One of which is that the legs may have been longer than other sauropods, or it may have been able to stand on its hind legs for a short period of time. And lastly, its legs could have been used for kicking the snot out of predators. Hmm, now here's a pretty cool dinosaur to profile for today. This is Cryolophosaurus Elliot. It's one of the earliest carnivores from the early Jurassic, and get this, this carnivore was discovered in Antarctica. Uh, but keep in mind that during the Jurassic, Antarctica was much closer to the equator than it is today. The place had lush forests and a variety of dinosaurs. The temperature was also cool, but nowhere near what it is today, of course. Cryolophosaurus had a mixture of advanced and primitive characteristics. It's kind of hard to classify what family Cryolophosaurus belongs to. 
For a while, it was believed to be either a ceratosaur or an ablosaur. A 2007 study reveals that it was more closely related to Dilophosaurus. Gee, I wonder if that crest on his head had anything to do with it. That crest on his head is obviously too frail to be used for anything other than display or maybe a signal. If it was used for display, chances are the crest was brightly colored. This dinosaur was also nicknamed the Elvisaurus by the paleontologists. Alright, let's take a look at the mail and see what kind of questions we have for today. Enko asks, what were the most commonly found dinosaurs, and which were most elusive, and why? This is just off the top of my head, but Protoceratops is the most common dinosaur. As for the most elusive, I'd have to say... Megalosaurus. Megalosaurus is one of the first dinosaurs ever discovered, and this is all we have of it since it was described and published in 1824. Actually, supposed Megalosaur fragments were described as far back as 1676. It was thought to be the thigh bone of a human giant. Another piece of megalosaur fossil was described in 1763 by Richard Brooks. He called it the, um, the <coughs> human scrotum. <coughs> As for why they're common or rare, Protoceratops is common because there's a lot of them. And Megalosaurus gets my vote for being the rarest because we've known it for so long and yet we have so little of it. Nickerson General asks, have we finally come to a conclusion about what killed off the dinosaurs? The asteroid impact theory is still the most popular theory, and just recently we've discovered that there may have been two asteroids that hit the Earth, not just one. Gfresh06 asks, In what era did the Godzillasaurus originate? The answer to this is very simple. Go to the That Guy with the Glasses forums, hunt down Shadowing Tronix's personal address, get a gun, point it at his head, and threaten him to finish the Godzilla vs. King Ghidra review. Your answer's in there. And that about wraps it up for this edition of the Dinosaur News Center. If you have any dinosaur-related questions that you'd like me to answer on this show, please use the email address below or at the end of the credits. Until next time, this is the Illiterate Scholar, signing off.